This is the Conscious Mental Health Podcast for curious clients and conscious clinicians. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered health or mental health advice. Recording, yes. Okay. I'm excited. I know. This is different for us. Yeah. It We're is staring different. at each other in the face. Hello. We don't usually get to do that. I but know. I am like really excited about this new like little adventure we're having with our podcast for us. And we're going to start this whole new thing. Yeah. I'm pumped. I know. Hey, I'm Juniper, a licensed clinical social worker and mental health educator. And I'm Laurel. I'm a licensed professional counselor and also a mental health educator. Here we are. High five. And when we say whole new thing, what are we talking about? Um, well, we're talking about how we you and I are going to get to talk to each other way more yes we're like exploring what it's like to just have conversations as people and clinicians and clients of mental health services and fun fact Laurel and I see the same therapist we do (laughs) should we give her a shout out yeah hi Jane we love you oh you're the best so basically what we have what we've been talking about Mm -hmm. is that we already do this together anyway and with other clinicians and other members of our team where we just talk about the week right right yep. and friday tends to be the day because you don't see clients on friday we right. typically reserve that day so i'm like thinking that it could be interesting to share this with our audience yeah and i was you know we were both talking about it and i said i listened to a couple of podcasts that i love that do sort of a weekly end of the week roundup recap thing right right? and i don't know i like tuning into like tuning in who am i (laughs) am i 63 years old laurel came up with what i think is very cool well we kind of came up together but really it was your idea um so we're kind of calling this segment um once a week instead of weekly roundup because other people have that we were thinking after hours, but then we decided that that sounded a little like we were going to be drinking or other things. Yeah, it sounded a little too adult yeah, for like our vibe here. Yeah, not right. that adult is bad. No, but it just might not be yeah. what we're trying to do. And we go to bed at like eight. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I was definitely asleep. Yeah. So that's false advertising. Before double digits last night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. False advertising. There's mm-hmm. zero after hours happening. Correct. In our world. Correct. And, um, so we, yeah, what, how did we come up, how did you come up with the, um, after billable hours, yeah. right? Because I'm done, you know, seeing clients for the week. This is my after billable hours moment Yes, every week on Friday. So when you're done seeing clients and when it's after quote unquote billable hours, we can kind of let loose. So as we're speaking, we are speaking as therapist, but we are not on the clock. And we are not your therapist, and nor do we want to right now. Probably not. I mean, if any of my clients are listening, <laughs> bless, love you all um, in a therapeutic way. Yeah. And also, I'm not your therapist right now in this moment. 100%. So after billable hours is us being therapists, but we're also humans. So we are clients and clinicians, and that's who we are hoping to reach with this show. Yeah. Maybe some clients and clinicians will want to listen to us. Be, banter yeah, be people yeah also that are therapists and that really love what they do and we have like expanded into education and different realms and, and I, I love this i love this adventure and i'm ready to keep going but something that we thought could be really cool is that we s- tend to send each other memes and different like memes TikToks, whatever um on instagram and we thought it could be funny and cool To share with each other, this is a meme that I thought of you, right? And And I specifically sent to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to start. Okay. So the one I'm picking for this week is, let me go down. Oh, oh my God. Why am I in vanish mode? Uh Uh-oh. Oh, good Lord. Okay. This is embarrassing. Now I'm 63 years old. (laughs) Yes. Oh my God. What is vanish mode? Okay. Well, I was like really struggling between two, but... I don't know why this is really speaking to me right now. So basically, this is a kind of like Renaissance looking photo of this like, 
is renaissance the right word? I this, guess, like, yeah. Kind of like renaissance-ish. Princessy lady. And she's like really getting close and hugging with like a demon that maybe looks like a demon. And it, the, the caption is me and my thoughts. And so when I saw this, I was like, yeah, exactly. Like getting real cuddly with just the kind of what some people would say is scary, ugly, but also regal looking. There's also it some is like quite regal. Yeah. Look, he's wearing like, um, well, I guess I shouldn't assume the demon's gender. Yeah. They are wearing like a cape and a golden medallion. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, I might be a little scary or I might look like I also don't have skin anymore and that I might be a zombie, but also like I am dressed to the nines. So it's like it's almost making it like the thoughts that come in that we're just like don't really want to round like a little nicer and easier to hug. Yeah, because as therapists say all the time, which lately I've been really resistant to is like lean into your feelings, lean into it, embrace the dark thoughts and the shadow. And I'm like, fine, but can we put a, like a, a gold like yeah. coat on it? Also, are they wearing like a moon belt buckle? What? I didn't even see. Am that. I looking that it's a little far away. From me. I can't tell. So what did that, um, what did that mean to you when you sent it? Um, I just on? appreciated the, I like Memes that include old timey art. Okay. You know, and I think <laughs> I just, the our art appealed to me, but also like, yeah, look, she's got her forehead pressed up against the demon. Yeah. But also she looks like she could be, wait. It looks What's loving. That? Loving and or. I don't know. It looked loving to me. See, to me, I'm like, she looks like she can't really cry. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> That's you're projecting onto that art. I think you I know, am. like we. But so am I, right? Like neither of those are right or wrong. It's just like a real shark blob. So first you like the art, but then when it said me and my thoughts, what really? What um, because kind of I like? like my dark thoughts. I think it's funny, and sometimes I say dark jokes, and people. I think people it get uncomfortable. Yeah, and I don't. I don't think of myself as a particularly nihilistic person. I'm actually like a pretty like optimistic person um but i think maybe that's why people get uncomfortable exactly. when i go dark is they're like whoa, whoa <laughs> don't like that. that from you yeah um yeah. so i just i like my dark weird like humor shout I think out it's great yes even shout if it makes that. people uncomfortable i guess yeah Psh. whatever everyone has them yeah that's true. they're just not cute and dressed up like yours are <laughs> yeah mine are cute and dressed up for sure because yeah. it's usually in the form of humor. Right. Whether it lands or not, I don't know. But. 100%. 100%. And I love it. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. It did something to. It did something for me today, You're too. You're so welcome. I love that. Oh, who? Should we give a shout out to the, the oh, memer? Yeah. It looks like it was coming from Mother Wart and Rose. Ooh, I do what love that What kind of witch? What kind of witchy account is it's that? It's a very witchy it. account. I'm nice. into it. Oh, death care, grief support, and grief spells. Yeah. Yes. I'm into it. Art making. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And followed by softcore trauma, who you just I also introduced love me to. Trauma. I'm so glad you introduced me to yeah. that account. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So shout out these are very cool. I can't wait. I'm following right now. Follow. Okay. Yay. Okay. So I am gonna go. I was trying to decide if I was gonna go full hot take, just like right off the bat in our first thing, or if I was gonna go like non sequitur. I think I'm gonna go. Totally non sequitur, just like, just random. Okay. Because we could do the hot take. Okay. I think that the hot take actually could be a whole episode. So we'll save that for mystery episode coming up in the future someday. This one that you sent me is the account is at Sirloin Tips. Don't know much about that account, but I'm into, I like a sirloin. Um, and it's a, I think a tweet from at Art Lesb Zero. And it says, here's your flower in the worst possible container. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Slash f- or from flower companies. Yeah. And honestly, I-, I just like this one because I feel like this is a descriptor of everything that's happened in my life the last two weeks. Right. And what I mean by that is. 
flour being in the worst possible container is not the worst thing that could happen to me, but everything felt like moderately to significantly inconvenient. Yes. And there was not a single let up. It was like everything that occurred in my life was flour in the worst possible container. Fuck you. Exactly. And could I get the flour out? Sure. But Did what it happens also when you do? Go all over my countertop. Yes. Yeah. Flies in your face. Yes. Why is it like wrapped up? Like why is it folded so many times? I don't understand. And why is her flour always in the folds? And why when you un exactly and but I love what you talked about that because like it's a it's a quote it's like relatively a minor inconvenience when you think of everything in the entire world, past, present, and future. For sure. And for me, those are the ones that feel the most uncomfortable. Right. It makes me want to hurt someone. Because they every chip now and away. Then. You know, they chip yes. away. I don't want to hurt anyone. No, please I don't. do not assess me. Um, but it does make me want to punch and kick. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. It's and the little things. Like when you get the flour out into the cup, like you can't get the cup out of the bag. Yeah. It slams against the sides of the bag, and yeah. then you have to try again. It's the whole thing, and it just chips away, chips away your spirit just a little bit. Yeah, just just. just until that one moment. And then what do you have left to deal with the big things? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. But mm-hmm. here we are. I have survived the flower bag. But is that why you chose that one? Is that what you were thinking? Um, yeah. I, I think that you have successfully, uh, like a very good therapist, you see this as a metaphor for all of yes. life. Which we, I believe we have the best skill of being able to take, I'm going to say almost anything, and turn it into a metaphor. Oh, for sure. Yes. I mean, Mm -hmm. I can't think of anything that we couldn't turn into a metaphor. Metaphor queen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I happen to love metaphors because then I don't have to actually think about the thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can think about how the metaphor, so it's like external, it makes me feel better. So yes, the flower I chose, uh, I don't remember when I sent that. Actually, my friend sent me that one. That was a a forwarded DM from a friend, but it felt so right. To send to me. Yeah. Okay. It felt so right because of exactly what you said. There is, I've been saying this to my therapist and this has been like my motto this year is, can I suffer in peace? Mm -hmm, And here's mm -hmm. what I mean by this. When I say may I suffer in peace, it's like there's already things happening in the world. There's going to be anxieties. There's going to be unfairness. There's going to be pain, anger, and also beauty, right? Okay. Those are things we cannot control and they're part of life. But there's other things that happen right? The extras that just add to the suffering. And my goal is to kind of try to look at those extras, right? I'm not going to do the thing where I try to control the things that we can't, right? (laughs) So wise. (laughs) Um, I can't anymore, right? There comes to a point where it's like that, but it's the extra. And to me, the flower bag represents the extra. Like, could you find a better container? So that's one less thing yeah. To add to what is already right. happening that we can't control that's part of life. So, yeah. That's Someone's going to comment on this and with some sort of like tip about how you should put flour in some sort of a container from the bag rather than reusing the bag. And I just want to throw out there right now that I don't have the executive function to do that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love you. Thank you yeah. for thinking of the tip. I'm thanking you preemptively. Before you even write it down, before you even type it out, I will not do it. No. I I will never. No space. Nope. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Thank you so much because also putting it into a container requires a lot of steps, but you still have to open the effing bag. Oh, for sure. You're still going to have to deal with that. And let's also point out that no container is big enough for the whole bag. So then you have to save the bag yeah. to put back into the container. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. so come on. Yeah. I mean. Are we really, is this extra suffering or no? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely extra <laughs> suffering for me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not some of my more organized friends. Yeah. <laughs> but well, actually, that's okay. Speaking of uh, something that's been like a hot topic in our life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that we both recently, finally, as adult women, finally are taking care of ourselves and started our ADHD medication uh, journey. Yes. It's been 
a journey yes. for me already. Yeah. I don't. I know for you too, but I think it's both been helpful overall yeah. and good. It's so cool to have someone that's like in a similar situation that we're both kind of newer to this game where we've been um, white knuckling our entire life, which is fine. And there's a lot of things that can be done, right? Yeah. But for me, until I found myself being able to support myself in this way, all the coping skills, all those beautiful suggestions, thank you so much about the container, or um, my favorite suggestion is, why don't you just put it in the same place every time? Or my second favorite suggestion, um, why don't you just write it down the reminder? Oh my God. I hate that one. The cool part about the medication is like glasses for the first time. Yes. Then you can do the things a little easier. I still lose things. And I still write them down and forget them, but it's different. So what would you say? Yeah, I would say same. Yeah. It feels like there's just more ease. Like I still am forgetful and clumsy and lose track of shit. And we were talking about my home and how I'm not, I hope, a dirty person, but I just like don't see the dirt sometimes until I really see it. And then I have to clean my whole and deep clean my whole entire house. And those are my only two options, either to not see anything or to see everything. And so those are all still true. And I can just move through life and deal with those things that are true. It's just like a little bit more ease. Mm -hmm. And they aren't as quite as overwhelming to my life, I guess, is what I've noticed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been interesting. And I think also it's interesting because you kind of knew yeah. or like were diagnosed early as a kid, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you're new to the medicine piece, but not to the diagnosis piece. Um, and I'm a late diagnosis queen. And I just got diagnosed, right? And so it's really interesting to talk about that too, of like how we're both it, at this certain point in our journey with that. But like, we had different understandings of things. And so mm -hmm. it's been really helpful to like, get to talk to you about it too. Right? Yeah. And I find it really interesting, like certain things that you're discovering, I'm like, mm. and also <laughs> not that I've always known it. But there's always something really special about being seen. Yeah. And when someone like, uh, so you kind of know if someone's like, quote unquote, neurotypical or not, right. because then they'll offer you those said suggestions, mm -hmm. bless them. It's so yeah. great that it works for them. I love that for them. And have that like you, someone sees you because they'll just be like, yeah, that's so annoying. Yes. Or they'll be like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like, you know, you just yeah. get this like acceptance that I feel like growing up or having, especially with someone that doesn't know, you start to develop that mm -hmm. sense of self that is, for lack of better words, fucked up. There's something right. wrong with you because you can't do the things that you see other people doing around you, no matter how hard you try. Right. Or you can do it, but it takes like 500 hours of like so much time and effort. And it, but also the sustainability doesn't happen. Where it's like, I kind of knew, but I feel like there was also this piece that was really disappointing that people did know, but didn't do anything to support me on it yeah. because I was quote unquote, not, you know, failing or I was like, okay. So if I was like doing okay in school or functioning like with sports or music or whatever it is I did that like, well, I guess I'm fine. Yeah. But I kept thinking like, huh, that's interesting. Cause like now I would say most people would say, let's do something about that. Like you might need accommodations or you might, you know, oh, that makes sense that this is difficult for you or blah, you know, yada, yada. And I'm thinking, huh, why didn't anyone? But again, then again, it was the 80s and early 90s. And I feel like no one gave a shit like kind of about anything mental health. No. I mean, maybe it was just starting. But like, I think they were kind of just like, no, nope, you got that. Deal with it. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, I have memories of like being in school because, yeah, I was in school in like the 90s, like high school, early 2000s. And so like as a little kid, I have memories of having like, quote unquote, like the ADHD kid in my class. And they were just like always getting in trouble. And the mm -hmm. teacher just always seemed like vaguely annoyed. Mm -hmm. And then they had to like leave class to go take their medicine or whatever. And they were like, the freaking black sheep of the classroom. Would you have classified yourself more in a, in a I can't say this word. You can do it. You know, I had my speech classes you can and do my it. speech. What's it called? Mm -hmm. I had speech problems. Okay. My, you can do it. Okay. I'm gonna say it. 
inattentive type yes or primarily hyper or would you say you're a combination of both uh inattentive which is why i think nobody noticed yeah right i am not hyper i'm actually the least hyperactive person i know like i could sit on the couch for hours and not need to get up and i mean i am very fidgety though right that's the hyperactivity like i fidget and i like shred my fingers up and all that but like i don't bounce around right and um yeah i think that's why nobody noticed exactly that is something a pattern i'm sure you've seen it in your practice yeah. too and like just totally. in your life with people so i was predominantly hyper active but also had the inattentive piece mm-hmm. but that part gets that part gets attention because like right. you said it's annoying right. so like your behavior who you are as a human annoys people and honestly it annoys myself I, I typically annoy myself <laughs> maybe a um, hundred times a day. Yeah. And uh, so trust me, you're not the only one annoyed, <laughs> right? I'm thinking like, oh, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Why am I acting like this? Why am I talking so much? Why did I just say that and do that? Why did I just kick something randomly? Like it's it's weird to be mm-hmm. doing things that you aren't really like feeling that you're in control of because it, it's so like that impulsivity really comes out as a kid where yeah. you I would hit, bite, um, push, I didn't know. I was just trying to play. Yeah. But like it was um it was really interesting and also at that time period there was like really structured gender roles, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm yeah. so jealous of the the newer like alpha babies <laughs> because they can they don't have that. Right. But they were like you're a tomboy. You're not acting ladylike. Like yeah. I always just was like, well, I guess I'm a quote unquote tomboy. Does anyone say that anymore? Have you no. heard the word tomboy? There's no way. It's, I mean, maybe mean? maybe like I don't want to be like this person, but maybe like boomers. Yeah. Say that. I've never heard it. I Sorry, years. boomers. I'm sure there are plenty of boomers that are that would never say that. Super hip. That was very interesting experience for me. Mm-hmm. So I really never felt quote unquote feminine. I didn't understand why I'd rather play basketball outside or why I was like, Um, organized into that because at the time I didn't really have a gender construction of what that was supposed to look like Um, but I was quickly told that like I'm not supposed to take my dress and like put it above my head and say things like my name is Chili Willy (laughs) something I used to do all the time I got sent home from school multiple times Um, so then I never wore a dress again yeah, I bet not. Yeah, so you can see. Like, so there's this, it's just really interesting how that is, like, um, how the origin story of one's particular ADHD type really kind of gets interwoven into your, like, not only entire sense of self, but your nervous system, your responses, basically everything. And so when you, when you have, like, I'd love to hear yours about the inattentive mm-hmm. type, but as the hyper type quote, like, and then being called all those things, like I'll, I'll never forget. I was playing soccer. This was before there was like women's teams. Yeah. So it was like co-ed right in middle school. And there was a person behind sitting behind my mother that was like, who is that number 13? She is insane. She's a bully. Look at her pushing people around. Like, look at her. She is, that's too much. She's too aggressive and like that my mom turned around and she was like that's my daughter and Good for her though yeah for like real. she turned around and she said well that's my daughter yeah um and yes I was very aggressive um but like isn't that a good thing in a sport where you're a defender but for some odd reason that couldn't translate into my regular life mm-hmm. uh so like being too aggressive is dangerous Right. So like you learn all these things to tamper it in and then, you know, you develop your fun anxiety disorders. Mm -hmm. You know, I have multiples and I'm sure it's because, well, there's lots of reasons, but like I do think part of it is like because I couldn't physically like express a lot of that energy. It like all had to become inward. Yeah. Because physically expressing it is dangerous and you get in trouble and no one likes you. Yeah. Like really people have trouble struggling being friends. So like Mm -hmm. tell me about your experience with inattentive type growing up. So I'm 37. I just got diagnosed. So um, a lot of the things that I think are I'm now able to kind of connect back or I'm making all of these connections, but I just assumed it was just like part of my personality, which I guess it is. Sort of, but it, it's like in a different, it adds an additional context, right? I thought it was like a, just a flaw that I couldn't overcome and I couldn't understand why 
it was very easy for everybody else to do those things, right? And so I ended up really internalizing a lot and like taking care of things myself because I didn't want other people to know that I wasn't able to do it. So for example, like this is like just one tiny, but I think about, did you have to do like fill out your agenda in school and get it signed? I disassociated most of my young life. So I okay. I probably did have no memory of it. Cool. Okay. So what it was for me was when we were in school, like they're trying to teach you how to use a planner, which fuck a planner, but whatever. I, by the way, never mind. Planners are great. They just don't work for how me. How many do I've, you have? How many? Right now I have zero because I used to have like five different places to put things and I would lose them. Every time. So now I have zero. I'm trying other things. It's a whole journey. I has, still haven't found out what's worked, but that's fine. But they were trying to teach us how to use a planner. And so we would have to like part of our school day was to like write down um, at whatever the hell we were supposed to write down, like our homework for the day or whatever, and then get it signed like okay. by our parents. I feel like I'm going to throw up as you're talking about this. I okay. feel so anxious. I know. So I would not do that, of course. Would I ever do that? No. So I would have to go through and make up like weeks of like planner notes. And I actually don't know how this wasn't like caught yeah. because like obviously what what was I writing in there? Like clearly wasn't the information that it was supposed to be in there because I was making it up for weeks and like get it signed and God bless my mom. Like, she was doing her thing. She was a working parent. Like, she was just like, okay, I guess I'll sign this. Like, no big deal. But I would have to do it, like, weeks at a time. And I would, like, I mean, like, she would sign a whole bunch of weeks all at once, right? But I wanted to do it by myself so that no one knew that I was having to make it up. So that's what happened to me in general, like, in my whole life is now I want to do everything in secret by myself. And so that, like, nobody knows where I've, like, missed the ball or, like, um, procrastinated or forgot or, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, that was my masking was that I would just do it all myself and never, like, engage anyone in, like, helping me or, like, um, knowing even what I was doing. Like, I don't want anyone to know what I'm doing ever so that if – I'm like messing up somehow. I can go back and fix it on my own and no one will know. Right? Yes. I'm literally, I'm feeling this physically in my body as you're speaking. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's so upsetting mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. <laughs> because that sounds uh, so stressful and overwhelming. Yeah. And lonely. I mean, I can Am laugh I about intense? it now. No, yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, Let's get serious. Jane, are you ready to talk about this yes. in our next session, Jane? <laughs> um, no, for real though, like I, I felt like, the grief and the sadness over it. Like you can laugh about it now, mm -hmm. but I, it's more about like recognizing this pattern that developed as a kid for that reason. And now I continue it as an adult sometimes. So I don't really have a good reason. You know what I mean? Like, why do I not want to like tell people what I'm doing? Like, why do I not want people to know what I'm working on or like what I'm trying to finish or whatever? Like even in my personal life, not, not in work, just like ever like projects like projects or, yeah. or anything i'm like nope nobody can know about it until it's completely 100 percent finished and then everybody can know about it right but nobody can know about it in like the working stages like yeah. that makes me feel sick i will never never i mean i shouldn't say i'll never that's my work that's my growing edge actually though you have done that a little bit you've shared a few edits that were not 100 percent complete yeah that's true and I've, i'm working on now that. that shows me like how hard that must have been and yeah. vulnerable. And yeah. I want to give you props for that. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And also, is that so internalized? I don't know if this is what now you would like want for your little self. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, this is getting a little. Well, we're therapists. It's going okay. To. You know how it, it doesn't does. bother me. Yeah. So, like, you know, would have wanted, I don't know, my sense from when you're speaking is like for someone to ask, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to ask, maybe just inquire yep. a bit what was going on in your agenda today or yeah. just little, little questions mm -hmm. 
because it was all internalized, like, I don't want to, like, you know, blame everyone. They might not have known to ask. No, I don't think they did. Now, we know as yes. adults yeah. to ask. Right. But, like, I shouldn't say adults. As adults who have been through a lifetime of therapy yeah. and, um, <laughs> you know, we, like. Who have to figure these things out for their career right. so they can talk to other people about it. 100%. <laughs> like, but we would maybe know to ask. But, like, yeah. maybe at the time it wasn't. But, like, to me, is that what could have been? I'm mm-hmm. just curious. Evil to you? Yeah, I think at the time I wanted the least attention on me possible, obviously, as evidenced by this whole spiel. And I think actually what would have benefited me was more attention. So what I did not want is what would have benefited me, right? For people to be checking in, giving me more deadlines. on, And, and this is like actually research-based, right? So I don't – do you know who Dr. Russell Barkley is? Do you know the ADHD professional? He's great. Um, He's very dry. (laughs) And he's an MD. So he's very like science medical model based around how he approaches ADHD. But he's like a really – like he's high up in in regard in the ADHD field, right? Like he has done so much much research. He's written books. He has like this whole amazing YouTube channel, which I recommend to a lot of clients. Is one thing that he says over and over is that kids, especially, but all people who have ADHD need more accountability, more deadlines in shorter intervals. They need to be not handheld, but like a lot more support externally um, to function. And that's just the way their brain works. And so nobody knew that I had ADHD. Nobody knew that. And that's okay. Well, it's okay in terms of like the time frame, the time period it was like, nobody would have known to check that. And actually side note, I actually just found an article and read an article that the second highest time for a woman to get diagnosed with ADHD is between ages 36 and 38, 39. So it's You're right like, on track. I'm right on track. Um, Right now, anyway, obviously, generationally, that'll probably change, right? But, um, yeah, I think if I could have had anything that would have helped, it would have been way more attention and accountability. And, you know, like, there's a lot of factors that go into that, and that's okay. But, yeah, I think, like, having external accountability helps me. Like, even more deadlines and work and stuff. Like, oh, that was the other thing. If I had a long project in school, (sighs) Friend, you better believe I was writing that paper all night long and stepping onto the school bus with fresh hot ink in my hand. Like, I could not do long-term projects at all. And so it's just one of those things. Yeah. So that's a long answer to your question. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it sounds exactly right on. And you said something that really, like, stuck with me is that sometimes what you probably needed isn't what you wanted. Yes. And... Like, I think that that could probably stretch for a lot of people yeah. and like reasons and <laughs> yeah. con- like issues. Totally. Because it's interesting that you probably, if you did get attention, you probably like were able to deflect it so well. Mm-hmm. Or like you maybe even were like, giving the energy off that like you didn't. And so people just like went with that. Yeah. But what I find interesting is the similarities between our experiences are that I also don't like attention, but the impulse because of my energy and my talking and my, because the attention I usually got was negative. Yeah. So what I did was, and I'm really like impressed with myself for coming up with this. And like when my executive functioning was like basically like just a fresh <laughs> little sponge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so I decided that if I was going to get attention, that it was going to be on my terms. So I then was voted in uh, sixth grade. I got my first class clown vote. Oh my gosh, of course you did. Yeah. And so I decided that I wanted to be in charge when people made fun of me. So I sense. learned how to self-deprecate. I learned how to take my tripping and falling and my no sensory abilities. Like I would kind of like exaggerate it or like just do little things with my impulses that I knew would be funny versus like just annoying. But what ends up happening when you become class clown? What do you think? Oh, um, I mean, I am trying to think about it from my perspective of like, 
being the opposite of the class clown. Um, yeah, that's like your narrative. Like you can never escape it. Yeah. And a lot of people here can relate. Like I wanted, I, I want as an adult, I wanted those accolades because like I wanted to prove it to myself, to others. Like, right. but now I probably overdo that because I, you know, want every certification and training and I constantly am looking up programs to feel valid in oh, myself. Oh, is that why? A hundred percent. Oh, so interesting. But, and one of my friends um, in high school would like look, got to know me a little bit. And they, I remember, I'll never forget. They remember, they looked at me and they're like, oh, you're not dumb. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And they were like, well, the way you present yourself is like such an, and this is the under, another ADHD thing. Oh, you're such an airhead. Oh, you're so goofy. Oh, you're so flighty. Oh, you're, and back then, you know, back mm-hmm. when people were still like very rude gender wise, like you're a ditz. Yeah. You're yeah. a ditz. Mm-hmm. Um, and so anyway, uh, I'm going on and on, but the point is, is like, and I'm sure that people can really relate to these two particular stories. And even if you're not neurodivergent, some of like just some personality characteristics get labeled and like become a part of you. But for me, the, the type of attention I probably needed was like soft, gentle, empathetic, like anyone asking me if I had a feeling would have been neat because when you present hyper And you've taken that and done this like whole self-deprecation, well, I'll listen to you, you know, well, when you, when you take that, then no one really asks, huh? And you know, then I learned late later in life that comedians typically have depression. Oh yeah. That makes total sense. And I I really, this is so, this is so weird to say, not weird. Actually, no, this is actually perfectly acceptable, even with master's degree. And I've been in therapy, like I didn't even know that I had signs and symptoms of a mood disorder, like depression, because of the anxiety and the Mm, hyper, like they were masking that. But I think actually there was like some deep sadness and grief inside of me and also some physical symptoms of that. But I never knew. I just, yeah, it would have been neat. It just would have been neat to maybe have not to white knuckle my entire lifestyle. Yeah. Right. I feel that. It would have been neat. It would be. Well, that's what I said when I, (laughs) the first time I, the first day I started Adderall, I was like, this would have been neat in school, right? Like through all of college and all of graduate school, Mm -hmm. you know, would have been neat to know, even if I hadn't been on medication. Do you know what would have been really neat? Not having to have panic attacks your entire life. Yeah. That'd have been cool. Sure. Cause I'd have noticed great. that with my, with now that I'm getting the ADHD quote unquote treated uh, pharmaceutically, which it is, I don't even say quote unquote there. It is doing something in my brain. Yeah, for sure. And guess what? I have not had a panic attack since then. Mm-hmm. Not Isn't one. That interesting. Not one. I feel like people. Oh, so here's the first comment that a person who I shall name nameless said when I started taking medication, I had a lot of people against it in my life. Uh, but they were like, Oh yeah, well it must be easy uh, to get because I was like saying, wow, I got like I was able to do some tasks that previously I wasn't able to do, like pay a bill. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like, yeah, well, <laughs> you're on speed. Must be easy to get things done when you're on speed. And so my first response was, well, when you do a bunch of speed and coke um, at a party, are you trying to do your laundry? Yeah, I'm sorry. Are you trying to pay a bill? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what would what's your what does that drive you nuts? Yeah, for sure. Has anyone ever said that to you? So no one has said that to me yet, but I haven't actually, I mean, I'm telling everybody now, <laughs> but I haven't actually like, you know, it. Ha- I've told good friends. Is this your coming out story? Maybe. For ADHD? Maybe. Um, but I haven't like broadcast it. I think because it is so new, I wanted to like make sure it was real. Does that make sense? Like I was like, what if this isn't real and it that's doesn't help cool. me? And that's like not what I have. And I've been like pinning all my hopes on this. And actually I'm just a super lazy, unorganized person. <clears throat> so it's okay. It's, it is helping. But like, so I, I guess I have had less conversations. And also I feel like the people that I have told <laughs> you guys, all of my friends are like, not all 80% of my friends are like a mental health adjacent. So, like, all of the people I've told with very few exceptions have been like, oh, cool, you know, glad that's helping, right? Which is nice. Like, I I would say, like, that's not normally the conversation I think a lot of people have. Right. Um, but, yeah, that would piss me off if somebody did say that. Yeah. I would be – I would have some words. Um, it is part of why stigma exists. Yeah. It is part of why people internalize their – 
um, deficits, if you want to call yeah. it that, their executive function deficits, because of statements like that, that reinforce that you're lazy, right. that reinforce that you're not trying hard enough, reinforce that you're just not prioritizing it. Mm -hmm. You just don't care enough about that. Mm -hmm. Or reinforce the idea that you're going to make it into an excuse for everything. Yeah. And, oh, wow, like, God forbid that you have an, quote, an excuse yeah, government. <laughs> you, That's true. How dare you That's true. That's have true. something going on in your mind and body that that manifests in ways that are difficult? Oh, mm -hmm. right. okay. Okay, I'm getting pumped up. So th I've been loving this conversation. I'm glad this is our first one Me just too. because it's it's so organic because we've been talking about it. I know. And it's yeah, been, we couldn't help it. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So how did we want to end our after billable hours? Well, we've been kind of thinking about it and we're open. We're open to suggestions and to yeah. have things growing and shifting and changing. Yeah. But we were like, okay, well, let's be real here. How do we end our sessions? I'm so cheesy. Yeah. I, if any of my clients listen to this, I'm... I am apologizing actively for the fact that this is my go-to. But I do I do still hang on to it for a reason, I think, which is how are you going to take care of yourself this week? That's my usual go-to. Right. What is your usual go-to? And, and do you, what do your clients do? I mean, they, they're I, used to it by I now. I think they're used to it by now, most people. Either that or they're like, if they're newer, you know, to my mess, then um, my lovable mess. Um... I think they are just kind of like, what does that mean? You know, which is fair. Jay. What does it mean? It means how are you going to get through this week yeah. till the next time I see you? That's right? what self-care is. Yeah. Right. It looks differently in in all situations. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. I think what happens when things become popularized and put into situations in which a 30-second explanation is all you get. Right something very complex can turn into something that seems sure. like one size fits all. Yeah. I think that's actually a really good way of putting it. So like once someone gets the sense of understanding what taking care of yourself is, it's not like a blanket statement of taking a bubble bath right. or doing five minutes of meditation a day. Right. Like, and so I like that you kind of, we were, we have been talking about like the idea of when someone says like, what's one thing you're grateful for. And that's, Blech. that's great. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. just vomited. Noise. I know. So well, we, well, well, we'll get into later my beef with positive psychology. And actually it's, it's like the beef is um, supported by a lot of research yeah, actually around sure. that. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's cool yeah. to think of things that you're grateful for. But for me that, that, that there's like so many implications for that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is based on our conversation today. Like you better not complain. Yeah. Like you better just make everyone comfortable around you. So there's like the implication when I hear the word gratitude, it's not just toxic positivity. It's also like, um, everything has to be okay. Right. And so I like that idea. This is going to fit with my whole thing of like, let me suffer in peace. Mm -hmm. It's like, so I usually end, um, and you know, I've been out of clinical work for a little while now, but I usually end the session of saying something similar, mm -hmm. but I, I stated it a little different. I say things like, what's going to get you to our next appointment? Um, and this is not for high crisis situations. Right. No, no, no. This mm -hmm. is for all situations. I, mean, I guess it could be, but it is yeah. all for situations. Right. For all situations. Yeah. Yes. Like we all need to figure out a way to get up and be out mm -hmm. of bed in the morning. Yeah. And some days when it's like feeling pretty easy then we get to do extra stuff, yeah. extra nice thing. Okay, so I'll go first. What's going to get me to the next week? I mean, honestly, you you mentioned DNC and obviously like it's over. Um, but I have been like 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 absorbing like a little baby sponge like all of the internet content about like all of the different things that happened at the DNC and like, I really feel, um, and I know that there's, you know, I, I want to acknowledge too, it's not all perfect, right? The, the uncommitted movement was not given a place at the DNC, which I think was a mistake. Um, but if we're holding everything in, in our hands, like all equally, I think there is a sense. And we were talking about this earlier before we were recording, like a sense, a different feel emotionally right now. Um, and I think the world has, or our, you know, in our social location, like 
just like the the sense of like a future has been very dark and sort of depressing and even if things aren't where perfectly like where we would like them to be um i think it's getting better or i feel better about some possibilities for change some possibilities for for reasons to hope for our future and for like the younger generation's future. And so that's been getting me through just like being able to settle in some of the like joy and hope that is present that was not present before. So that's mine. Oh my gosh. Yes. You really just spoke some words that uh, were important because that's kind of how I was feeling. I'm just going to add on to that. It might be because of TikTok influence, but I'm back to doing some art journaling, mm -hmm. which I was doing before, but now there's like lots of cool ideas. So I think one thing that I'm going to do is maybe my next page could be focused on that. Yeah. Because a lot of them are pretty dark right now. A lot of yeah. my pages are pretty intense. Mm -hmm. So like maybe what will get me through next week is like letting myself have one page. Oh, okay. Yes. That focuses on that feeling you're talking about. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Well, so... I guess that's it for the week. Okay. And I'll see you after hours again. Yay. Yay. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Bye. Bye, friends. Awkward. <laughs> so awkward. I'm so bad at goodbyes. We're going to figure Always out a awkward. better goodbye. Yeah, we do not want to have awkward goodbyes. No. And I can't or say ta-ta. Or maybe ta -ta. we just will. T -T and that's going to be our thing. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, Super I do the, awkward goodbye. Don't you do that with your episode. clients and then you like walk out and you have like the weirdest small talk? Yeah, the worst is when they stop at the bathroom and they're like, oh, I'm going to go. And uh, please know it's always okay to stop at the bathroom. Please do. But it's uh, like, I'm just like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, but, uh, okay. And then. Hilarious. I have to like. Yeah, every manage time. Manage my own awkwardness. It's right. only me. It's me. It's not anybody else. 100%. I'm awkward about it. Yeah. Office, fine. Everything's cool. But before and after, the walk from the waiting room to the office to me is like. The, the place where sometimes my nightmares land. And here's why. Because I will ruminate about what I did and said in the small talk yeah. range from here to there. You know, wouldn't it be interesting? Could be silent. Yeah. Could say hello and just walk and have a nice little I peaceful could never moment. Be but instead silent. it's like, are you kidding we, me? Yeah. Instead it's always like, blah, 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 weather. Oh. It's like, oh my God. And then when you're leaving, okay. It's yeah. like, oh, oh. it's so funny. Okay. 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 <laughs> bye bye. Thank you so, so much for joining us for our very first after billable hours, end of the week decompression conversation. We hope you're enjoying our new format and that you're able to take away some insights and maybe even a few laughs. If you're into it, please don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, and most importantly, leave a review or a comment so we can interact and learn from all of you. Check out the show notes for all the ways to reach out because your support motivates us to keep creating relatable mental health content. Because at the Bridge Academy, we're here to make mental health support accessible, relevant, and modern. If you want to learn more, you can check out our resources for clients and clinicians, including guided practices, CEUs, and worksheets by visiting www.academyimh.com. Oh yeah, one more thing. We have just dropped some unique and stylish new mental health merch that we um, lovingly designed just for you. So check it out. Let us know what you think and we will see you soon. 